Hello, this is Scott Carpenter. And welcome to a out in the field edition of the Sasquatch uh, Awareness Project. And I'm working on a special project that has me coming out alone, unfortunately, which I recommend against. But I will say I am armed and uh, have the GPS locator on me. And uh, this is going to be a short jaunt in and out to check something for the special project. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, in a few months I can let y'all in on what's going on. But uh, what I wanted to talk about, get back on track, because I've been I've been off track now or just doing other projects and not been doing a lot of content and dealing with the sausage. Sasquatch Genome Genome Project or the Sasquatch DNA Project. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk about uh, uh, summarizing the Sasquatch Awareness Project, the book. And uh, so um, I think it's important to remember, you know, the book was written for both those who want to learn the basic is, basics about what the Sasquatch is and the phenomenon. And also for those who have had encounters, one time, ongoing, etc. cetera. Uh, those who are having, uh, you know, issues at their homes, rural homes, farms, or even homes in the suburbs. And so, uh, with that being said, I think it's important to know that uh, you're not alone. And that's, uh, you know, if that's the main message I could get out to, to uh, people who have had encounters or experienced this thing, it be called a Sasquatch encounter, a Bigfoot encounter. You're not alone. There are people you can reach out to if you can't reach out to your family members, of course, there's me, Steve Ishdahl, uh, uh, David Plotis, and others that are, are out there. And uh, all those who reached out, I appreciate it. I'm way behind on my emails, <laughs> I know. But uh, I'm hopefully get caught up one day. But uh, I think it's important, you know, to remember, uh, that you're not alone and that you do have a support system and that uh, I encourage you to be brave and you know talk about your uh, encounters I think that's a big part for those who've had issues PTSD and other issues that's a big part of healing so oh sorry it's hot I had to uh, arranged to have two different people come with me and both of them had to cancel so but like I said I'm on a deadline and I have to do this so we're headed into the badlands uh, ready to roll so uh, a lot of mud holes it rained really hard last night so one of the important things is 
And one of the things about the Sasquatch Awareness Project book that I wanted to give you the basics. I wanted to give you a, a place to start and a good, you know, uh, foundation. You know, if I, so if that's the only book you ever bought, at least you, the person, would know enough and understand enough to be able to recognize when uh, the Sasquatch are in the area and what to do about it. Now, there are no experts, and I'm definitely not one. And, uh, Oh, what a mud hole. So, uh, but I think it's important to remember that uh, whenever you're doing an outing, whether it's, whether you're doing a, a camping trip, fishing trip, whatever, that you always have multiple plans. And, uh, and, and that you become aware of the Sasquatch sightings in your area. Because unfortunately, you know, there is no government institution that's going to do that for you. It's going to, uh, it's going to give you that information. So, you know, there are a couple of websites. You can Google it and find them. I'm, I'm, there's one I'm not going to give any credence to as far as give them any uh, publicity. But they do have, I don't trust the content of the sightings, but the locations are accurate. And so I would uh, definitely uh, recommend that you kind of look at that area. Also, remember that there's some uh, telltale hints that the Sasquatch might be in the area from uh, the tree structures that we've gone over. It could be the axes, could be the arches, could be things of that nature. Uh, of course, there's footprints vocalizations don't forget that and these are just things just like with any other animal you need to be aware of and like I said if you have an encounter whether it be an, you know an audible encounter like you get whooped at you get growled at uh, you get uh, rocks thrown at you yelled at screamed at uh, mock charge you know they raise this huge ruckus uh i recommend that you uh you know don't confront and back out and go somewhere else i mean that's the whole idea is they're wanting to get you out of that area for whatever reason and like i said you got to remember these things are a people or a human hybrid and so their motives What's on their mind, what's going through their head, we don't know and can't know. And so the best thing to do is just remove yourself from the area and go somewhere else. If you have a face-to-face -face encounter or a sighting encounter, uh, just treat it like a bear, a bear encounter. Don't run. Uh, keep eye contact or keep the sight on them. They probably won't do eye contact, but even if they do, uh, just, you know, stand your ground and slowly back out and go somewhere else. Of course, if you're armed, you know, use your own best judgment. I wouldn't shoot at one or I wouldn't take any aggressive action towards a Sasquatch unless you felt like your life was in danger and it was making aggressive moves towards you. And, uh, you know, they have the ability to perceive and some would say even read your mind. I don't know. I know they they sure seem like they can read your mind sometimes or uh, they can uh, at least discern your motives. So I think they'll, you know, they'll know you're serious. And to be honest with you, these things are so strong and powerful. If they wanted you, they'd get you. So if, you know, you're having an encounter, it's most likely to get you to leave the area for one reason or another and like I said I would oblige them. Uh, it's always good when you're hiking or doing any other outdoor activity of course to go in twos and uh, that's important. Oh, this mud hole got worse, way worse. 
Uh, but I'm going to go real slow. It's just pure mud. Good old red clay, eastern some mud. Anyway, so uh, you'll hear background noise. It's Sunday on the lake. A lot of a lot of people in boats doing their thing. I didn't even encounter somebody on a horseback. What does that see? Ooh, sloshy. And there's the there's the text. So uh, just remember, you know, those important things if you encounter a Sasquatch. And uh, you know, there are other cryptids out there as well. The dog man is more aggressive. And I'm just gonna be honest with you, I would, you know, if I have an encounter with one of those and I'm armed, I'm probably taking a more aggressive stance. And, uh, but again, that has to be left up to the individual and the circumstance of what it happens. But like I said, make sure that you go in twos and pairs. That, uh, and if you're forced to, like I am today, of, of uh, going it alone, then you uh, have your GPS. I can go armed here, so I'm armed. And uh, also, like I said, I've got people at home that know where I'm going and what I'm doing. We'll reset this. So I got people. I'm trying to hold this monopod so you don't get my big and hairy nose right in it. Oh, nasty mud. So anyway. So those are the main things to, to watch out for and to uh, educate yourself on. Like I said, you can't rely on the government or the National Park Service or you know, the Department of the Exterior and all that to inform you. You've got to inform yourself. And the fact that you're aware that the Sasquatch exists is step one and being prepared for that. It's like I said, it's just like if you go uh, hiking in the Smokies, there are bears there. So everybody's aware there's bears there. They know the protocols, they take the bear spray. And you know, you're aware of the danger. You're aware they're there. So it's not such a shock if you see one or have an encounter with one. Same thing with a Sasquatch. It's the same thing. You'd be aware, you'd be prepared. And uh, that way it's not such a shock when you see one, if you see one. Very rare, extremely rare. So uh, this will be part one of uh, my summary. There'll be probably three parts, I think. Uh, you know, most of the time, if you've had a single encounter and it's by chance, and that's in quotes, but you know, it's not something you planned for, you weren't looking for them, you were just hiking or out enjoying the outdoors and you had and you had the encounter that's usually it it's a one-off a very small percentage uh, get marked and they began to uh, at least follow you or sometimes if you're in the woods where they are they'll come to you and do little things like whoops or wood knocks etc to let you know that they're around and in part two we'll we'll talk about some of the things you can do to help stop that or minimize that but just be aware that in a small percentage i'll tell you the truth can't sugarcoat this that uh something just came out trail in front of me like a dog. Let's see what it is. Get up here. Oh, it's already took off. Might be a coyote.
I'm going to go down that trail. Wherever this was, came out this trail. See if I can find the footprints. A small dog. And then there are dogs. He's gone already. So anyway. So I'm getting ready to head in here to where my project's at. Burning up. But uh, that's it for part one uh, of the summary of the Sasquatch Awareness Project. Uh, guys, y'all be careful out there. Be safe. God bless you. Until next time, we'll see you later. So I wanted to do a little tack on. So part of my project, uh, there's a place where I cut into the woods and, and go into the woods for my project. And the day before yesterday, I noticed that it had the single rock in the center of the trail where I go in. I didn't put it there. This single rock was just here. It's in the middle of the trail. Uh, almost perfect in the middle of the trail. It's not a, it's a level trail. It's not a scoop trail where this rock would roll down in it. Uh, there's no, here's the rock. As you can see, it's basically in the center of the trail. I've talked about this before as one of the things that they do sometimes is they'll leave things out dead center. Sometimes a single rock, sometimes in threes, sometimes in fours, uh, sometimes sticks that are the exact same length, etc. And, the, you know, it always, you know, it's always the coincidence. It just happens to be the place that I go into the woods to check on my project. So, uh, is it 100%? No. But it's one of those things that you should be aware of, that this is a sign of a possible activity. And it's just something to be aware of. It's like finding a bear trap. I mean a bear trap, a bear track, or finding, you know, bear poop, fresh bear poop, or a fresh bear uh, track. You know they're in the area. Same thing with this. I know they're in the area. And so, just thought I'd tack that on as I'm sweating to death and it's 94 degrees. And I'm just gonna leave it alone. They've, they've marked it for, they've marked it for whatever. So, but I thought that was interesting and thought I'd point that out to kind of end up uh, the Sasquatch Awareness Part 1. So this is really goodbye. You guys have a good one. Be safe, be careful, God bless.